Calvin. Um, yeah, man, Calvin Cater, man, the yeah. next superstar. Watch out, I'm telling you. Man, I was uh, I was getting nervous during that second round when Dan was starting to come back a bit. I was like, oh, he had a couple, uh, I don't know what happened to Calvin's nose. I know he talked about it a bit afterwards, but huge win for you, you guys. You guys must be so excited about it. So congrats yeah. on that. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. I saw you, yeah, thank you. I saw you in the corner there kind of moving around a bit. Was that like <laughs> you just getting into the fight? Or are you like doing some visualization stuff or? Yeah, no, I just, I, I try to see it from my side. So I try to see it from Dan's side. I'm try, I'm looking at what Dan's trying to, trying to look for. I'm trying to see what Calvin's looking for. I kind of just can I, I was actually getting so locked in, so zoned in with Calvin <laughs> fights that I don't even know what happened. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I get in the zone and just kind of like, I just like, it feels like it's almost like I'm fighting. So, you know, I'm, I'm in there moving my head. I'm trying to duck and dodge the punches. So, uh, yeah, I get I get locked in, man. Like, But uh, I'm excited, man. He's fucking, he looked great. You know, now they're talking about maybe Max, talking about maybe Volkanowski. So, you know, like yeah. big, big, uh, big, big uh, upside to that. Yeah, to that w. yeah. Tell me a little about how the nerves compare you being ringside for Calvin and you going into your fights alone. Is there like, do you get nervous for both a little bit different types of anxiety? It's yeah. It's like more, it's, it's in a good way. Like nervous yeah. in a good way to where like, um, I, I think I, I get a little more nervous when Calvin's fighting. Cause I'm not, I'm not in control. Like I know what I, what I can do and I'm going to do with Calvin. I'm like, I'm hoping he does this and I'm hoping he does that. Or and I'm, and obviously I don't want to see, you know, him get hurt and all that. And then, so there's a lot going. So I can definitely say uh, I get a little bit more nervous or, or, or antsy when he's fighting. Yeah. But it's in a, good, in a good way, though, in a good way. Yeah. Was there anything that you took away from that whole experience in Abu Dhabi with it being like no crowd, like obviously prep and everything was a bit different when you got there, right? Like when you think about how you're going to prepare for fights in the future, was there anything that you really took away from it that stood out? Um, not, Honestly, not too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did Jacksonville, I think. Jacksonville helped us helped us out a lot with the crowd, um, the preparation, the being isolated. If anything, this was a little nicer, a little yeah. bigger, a little. Uh, uh, we had we had our own workout room. Um, the, the the view was better. So if anything, it was an upgrade. Um, yeah, no, yeah. I, it's just gonna be it's gonna be feeling how I, I know for me personally, it's gonna just be that first two minutes of just filling out the the cage with no crowd, and then once that happens, yeah. I know I'm gonna be fine. Yeah. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. If anything, it's less media. So that's one upside. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I thought, honestly, it's probably, it's probably easier now than before because before you had, you had, just like, or Calvin was at the main event spot. He had, he would have to do a lot of uh, open workouts, media. Um, depending on what state you're in, you're, you're kind of like getting shuffled around to certain gyms and, and uh, appearances and stuff like that. So, uh, this was easy. It was kind of like yeah. hang out, relax, stay in the hotel and get, and get told, uh, or hurry up and wait type of situation. Just wait here and we'll call for you. And then when we call for you, that, that you go fight. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I think it went smooth. Definitely can focus more on just like the fighting aspect of it. Right. And not the, yeah. the surrounding noise and whatnot. Exactly. I mean, obviously we got out there a little bit as far as like personally for ourselves, we got to go, uh, around the F1 racetrack, which I was pretty cool. Yeah, I saw that, um, yeah. yeah, it was insane, man. We're going like 200, 180 miles an hour. Going Probably probably a dumb idea now looking back at it, but yeah. uh, it was fun, man. I, it was like once in a lifetime type of stuff. Uh, got that. We had to do that. We get to, we had to go on the jet skis, you know, hey, the beach, all that. They had the golf course. We didn't get to play, but we were dying to play. We didn't get a chance to. It was just a little, a little too hot to play out there. Um, that that, uh, that yeah. sun kind of zaps your energy real quick. So we, we try to be conservative of what we did. And then we knew if we got out there, we were going to definitely play 18 holes. And that sun's no joke, bro. So yeah. we didn't do that. But eventually we'll get back out there and, and get, get some get some golf in. Yeah, I think it's important though for like athletes to hear that, like even for someone like like Calvin or you cornering him or whatever, you're in a week of the fight. You're still doing all these fun things around it, right? Like your life, like MMA is your job and UFC is your company you yeah. work for and everything like that. But yeah. that's not your life, right? You need to have a life outside of it to be able to enjoy the process, I think, a bit more. Yeah, yeah it helps too, you know, because obviously you're, you're there, you've been training for a while, you, have, you haven't been eating what you want to eat, you know, you know, you're, you're, you're watching your diet, you just, you know, so you, you've been doing, you've been doing real good for, for a while, then, you know, you get out there and kind of, you still got to keep going, but enjoy it at the same time. Um, that's the balance part, but you know, we're professional. We, we understand when to have fun, when to turn it off and then get back to work. Um, but um, I, we could, I, I could have seen us getting a little carried away. I, I was in the golf course. <laughs> yeah. You need Tyson to keep you guys in check a bit there. Eh? 
that's pretty much yeah, that's pretty much his job, man. He kind of yeah. like just like he points us to go here, points. To, actually, you almost got pulled over on the jet ski. Uh, Tyson, <laughs> Tyson got pulled over. I guess we went too far out into the red zone, and uh, Tyson he got pulled over. Me and Calvin were just gone. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, we, we didn't even notice until we saw him like like slow down and slowly coming back in. But it was it was a good time. Those jokes, yeah. Listen, man, let's uh, let's get more into in depth of your UFC career and your journey so far. And when you think of, or when you hear the words of like sports psychology, mental side of sport, mental side of being an athlete and all that stuff, what's the first thing that really comes to your head? Um, that's just huge. You know, that's like honestly like 90% of the, the job, you know, um, this thing is what we do. It's, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of crazy. You know, we get to go in there and, 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 and fight, you know, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's all mental. Everybody's good at what we do here. You know, everybody can wrestle. Everybody can do jujitsu. You know, everybody strikes. Everybody's a knockout artist. It's who's on point mentally. You know that that makes difference. Uh, makes you know really wins the fight. And uh, yeah. So when I hear that, I'm like, I I get excited because you know I've been I've been um, you know reaching out and doing a lot of homework and finding different ways to you know get mentally strong and stay mentally prepared and you know understand I understand that that's one of the biggest part of the game is that if you're not, if you're not, if you're not sharp on top, you know, it's going to be a lot harder when it comes to the, you know, getting to these top five, top 10 type dudes. Yeah. Is there a certain point in your career or like after a certain fight, maybe where it really clicked in how important the mental side of everything was? It was that it was one of my, my third UFC fight. I went to Brazil and fought John Lineker and I just yeah. mentally, it was like shocked to me. It was, a uh, my, my uh, first UFC loss. It was, Believe I want to say like almost like fifty thousand or maybe like fifty five uh, soccer stadium full of uh, screaming Brazilians. And I was after, and they're after all first, against I, you. Yeah, and at first I thought I was. I really did. I was like, Nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm. I'm. I'm that's not gonna affect me until you get there. You're like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's a hold of the ball game when you get there. You know, you got a whole country coming against you. Uh, when they so in Corte Chiba, they 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 blocked out pretty much the whole like city that's around the soccer stadium, and you. As you're going to the the stadium, you can just feel the whole town just shaking, shaking and rumbling from um from the crowd, and and it, I, I let it get to me. But it just, I let it get to me mentally, not physically. I wasn't like physically changed. I wasn't a different fighter, but I, you know, mentally I was just like a whole different person. And I got out there, it just wasn't my night, and it was all mental. You know, I got out there, just didn't do what I usually do, and it it happened so quick but so slow at the same time. And I just, and again, it was all in my head. So. Uh, after that point, I just did whatever I could to get, you know, mentally right as far as like talking to people, reading books, audio books or whatever it could be. Um, started, you know, and, and it helps out, you know, all those little details help out. And then, you know, doing your homework and trying to work on the mental side with, you know, myself, my girl or even Calvin, you know, we just sit there and do little little, little tests and, and, and practices and, you know, making sure that we're on point when it comes down to it because it's corny to say, but it really is like, 90% of the job and 10% yeah. is all physical, you know, and it really is because I've, I've been on both sides of it, you know, <laughs> from the wins and the losses, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all, when I'm on point, when I'm mentally on point, I'm, I'm doing stuff I don't even know I'm doing. I'm out there just like, oh, I didn't even know I did that. I was like, oh, all right, cool. But then when I'm when I'm not there, I'm like, it's like, it's bad. So it's yeah. all mental. It's interesting how you said, like, when you feel like you're there mentally, it's like you don't even know really what's kind of like you're almost in like in a Zen state, right? It's like you're just letting your instincts and your natural ability yeah. take over. It just trying takes to get rid of all the thoughts in your head of like doubt or, or overthinking things or whatever, right? Yeah, it just takes over and you get to this. We really do get to that flow state where you you almost control time and like, I, it's almost like your predictability. Like, I can predict what's happening next if that makes sense. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I know that he's going to go right. And I'm like, oh, yes. And boom. And it's almost like, I don't know if I'm making him go right or go left or whatever, but I can predict. Almost, It almost feels like, like two steps ahead or two, or two steps or two beats ahead. Like, we're yeah. on our, you know, like fit on the rhythm or whatever. Like, I'm just ahead every single time. And then, but even when, you know, you're losing, like, it, but if you're mentally there, like, you, you know, you're just like two steps behind and you can always <laughs> catch up, you know, saying when you're on point. But when you're in that, that, that state where you're not even paying attention and like you're thinking about this or thinking about that or thinking about the crowd like you, you feel like you're 100 steps behind and it's just it just gets bad yeah. you know so it's like it's a uh, it's an interesting thing to mind you know and i'm still obviously figuring out uh we uh the pi before this before the covid uh happened all this we they had uh, a sports psychiatrist up there they were helping out with a lot of uh, the athletes nice. we got to speak to we still kind of like texting um talking all that and email but uh 
sit down and personally one on one, but talking to people is uh, I, I highly recommend it uh, for anything really for anything like even if it's for your profession, for your career, your kids or whatever. Like I'm pretty sure like you can you can get better somehow, some way. Yeah, there's no way you won't get better. You know. Yeah, yeah. That kind of leads me to the one of the first fan questions. We kind of already touched on it a bit, but uh, at the People's Game 2020, he was wondering how important family, close friends, and coaches are in overcoming lack of self-confidence and we kind of touched on it already, but I just really wanted to just hammer down that point that when you look at an athlete or especially a UFC athlete, cause you only see them on the one-on-one combat in the cage. I think some people, some people lose sight on the team and the sports psychologist or the friends and family that are in the behind the scenes, helping that fighter out, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever it may be. I think it's, it's such a huge team effort, right? And, and it really yeah. rang true to me, seeing how close you guys are up at the cartel, you guys really are like a family, right? And I think it really speaks to how valuable that is to a fighter. I'm sure you and Calvin could both attest to how, how useful it is to have that cartel team behind you. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. It's all trust, you know, and, um, again, this is a, it's a lonely sport, you know, it's uh you do it by yourself when you're out there. It feels lonely, man. You're you're out there by yourself. It's like, we get, it's like, uh, it's like back in the day when you're a little kid and you get into a fight. Like, all right, meet me at the park. Go get all your boys. You'll run up to the yeah, yeah. to the park, but you're only you're the only one fighting. You're, all your boys are sitting there. They'll, they'll make sure nothing's going to happen. Like, you're not going to get jumped or that like that. But you're the only one fighting. If you can't deal with that lonely feeling of uh, you know, being out there and pretty much being out there in your underwear is naked out in front of millions <laughs> of people fighting. You know, it's a weird feeling. You know. Um, but you need your squad to get you prepared for that. You know, you, you need your squad to get you there. It's almost like you got your older brother looking over you, looking out for you to make sure nothing happens, you know, and that's what Calvin does for me and vice like, versa. That's what I do for him. And I'm like, I'm just making sure nothing happens. Like, yeah. I'm going to make sure you're going to get to the fight 100%. You know, nothing's going to happen in between. You know, your, your food's going to be ready. Your your weight cut's going to be super easy. You know, I'm going to make sure you're going to get there. Like, we're going to, you know, we're going to we're gonna spoil you before you even get into the cage, you know. That's a big part of what I do. I make sure, like, whatever he needs, I know he needs it, and I and I get it done before you even ask. You know, like, and if he asks, it's going to be yeah. because like it's just something new. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and to, to backtrack a bit here, you mentioned a bit about your first trip to Brazil and your loss to John Lineker, and I just wanted to touch on that a bit because UFC is a interesting sport where I think all the losses are magnified because there's so much talent in, in all the divisions, right? It's not like a regular yeah. season where there's 82 games to play and then there's playoffs yeah. after. It's like, it's, it's yeah. tough, right? That being your yeah, first, so, UF- yeah, yeah, yeah. That being your first UFC loss, just walk me through a bit about how you were able to pick yourself back up mentally afterwards. Like what was that kind of process like dealing with that first loss? So it was, I, I, I got the, we lost, jumped on a plane. I'm all, I'm all jacked up and limping around. Um, I'm taking, I got a long ass fight back. It's just like, it sucks. So the, the fight even seems longer. You know, the, the food tastes nasty. Like after a loss, everything is the worst, but yeah. you know, so I'm sitting there and it, it can be ice cream. This is, and I'm like, Oh, this is disgusting. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah, just like, yeah. it's just like, you're just in a bad mood. Um, so like, yeah, I just took, obviously took two days off, healed up. I uh, like my wounds. Um, didn't really go. And it wasn't that like, depressed or, or mad I just do what I had to do mm-hmm. one of my good buddies uh, recommended a, a, a book uh, Tim S. Grover uh, Relentless he uh, he recommended me that book to me he was like listen bro you just you had a mental fart that's all it was bro like I know you're talented but check, check this out you gotta you know work on your mental game and I was just like I never really put a lot of effort into it I'm just kind of like I'm gonna go out there and fight and yeah. he was like no nah, it's, it's, it's like you're not you're at a different level now but with this stuff where you gotta you know you got to take care of everything from your diet to your mental to, to obviously your physical and, and then to obviously the each discipline. So I was like, I stepped it up and I put a lot of energy and effort into, into that book and do my research and uh, audio books or, or, or even talking to people, talking to friends, talking to people that have been at that level with me, you know, like even reaching out to Lozon or reaching out to any other like mm-hmm. fighter or veteran, or whoever, just picking their brains and asking what they thought and how they, how they felt when they were down or, or how they felt when they were up. And, um, you know, all, I was asking as many questions I could possibly could as far as the mental game. I just put that same energy I did in getting physically better. I just put it, the same energy into the mental game and it, and it helped out. And I, you know, and then again, again, that and it's still, it's still hard at this level. You still got because after yeah. that Leninger fight, it's two more L's after that. So it's like, but I, I even those like the two more losses, I'm, I even dealt with better, and I knew exactly what I had to do. And it's just like I'm just getting better and better every single time. And like, yeah. 
it's just yeah, man. I'm just <laughs> just trying to. I'm just trying to get. And, and then like dealing with that, dealing with injuries, it's all like I'm just trying to stay mentally sharp and 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 put my energy towards the right things. Like with this injury and this COVID, I was all right. Well, now it's all about physical therapy and making sure Calvin Cater gets you know what I'm saying the best camps of his life or yeah. or the most attention. Or if I even if I can't 100 percent be there, okay, maybe I'm watching a lot of film for him or or watching his sparring and uh, met, helping him and with his mental or, or talking to him about little things like that. And that's what I've been doing. Like, and I just, and I know if I wasn't mentally strong, I would have been sitting here whining, complaining about yeah. injuries and yeah. getting fat and getting yeah, drunk yeah. and all that and just acting up. But now I, I feel great. And I, I almost feel better. Like feel like rested. I feel great. And I would have to say that's all, you know, mental for me. Yeah. Yeah. Going to Brazil, you know, and having 55,000 people scream at you is the opposite probably for you of fighting at home in Boston. I know you had a couple fights in Boston in the UFC. Walk me through how much fighting at home helps with your self-confidence or confidence in that regards. Like what does it do to your overall energy levels? Or do you really try and like block out all crowd noise, no matter if they're for you or against you? Yeah. Now, I'm now, yeah. So I went from fighting in Boston and that yeah. was familiar and that was easy to Brazil. And it was like well, a whole different like, situation. And like, I, I can't let that happen. Like, it has to be the same as if I'm in Boston or in Brazil. And that's what I learned. It was, and that, it's funny you said that because I went to fighting Joey Gomez in Boston. Like, yeah. It's like, oh yeah, this is easy to, to now it's harder because it's in Brazil. Like, no, it shouldn't be that way. You know, it's in, and that's all, the, the bullshit I built up in my head before and after or even trying to like think too far ahead like oh if I beat this guy I'm going to be able to get this I'm going to get this on pay-per-view points and potential you know champion instead I'm like and I, I haven't even fought him yet you know so I'm, like, I'm just thinking about a whole bunch of nonsense before I even got in there with them um so yeah I mean but as far as that it has to be the same you know yeah. for me I, and, and I'm starting to get there to where it doesn't matter what arena what state what country we're in it's it's the same cage, it's the same Rob Font, and I'm going to go out there and do exactly what I want to do. Exactly, yeah. And, um, you know, looking looking through a bit of your, your UFC fight journey, I know you've had a couple fights where guys have pulled out or, you, or you've had to pull out for injuries or whatnot. How, how tough of a pill is that to swallow? Uh, I guess we'll start off with you pulling out from an injury. Is that something that maybe earlier on you harped on a bit more and dwelled on a bit more compared to now? Uh, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to never really pull out of fights for injuries. Um, yeah. I've been healthy. I've been real healthy all my, my career. Um, this is my only real injury. Yeah, um, yeah. And it happened, How's the knee feeling, by the way? It feels great. You know, I'm yeah. about 85% right now, 85, 90% right now. So I'm excited. I'm, 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 I'm for sure. I, I was out there with Heather Linden, uh, the PT for the UFC. So she was checking me out. She's like, she's confident I'm getting back in there by November. Yeah. December the latest, depending on how I personally feel, but I'm thinking I'll be good. I'm doing a lot of stuff right now that um, I probably probably shouldn't be doing. And they're like, no, I'm keep going, keep going. Like I like what you're doing. Like keep, yeah. you know, like we're just pushing. And um, it's yeah, part of the I'm, competitive I'm, mindset of an athlete, right? Yeah. Like you got it. Yeah. You got it. You just we want to push and put. I've had countless injury rehabs of like broken bones or torn ligaments or whatever, and it's like you just want to get in as much as possible into PT and training to get back yeah. as soon as possible, right? It's part of the competitive you know, mindset. I'm in there four days a week, you know. So after the, so I fought December. I got a uh, surgery January, and then right after that, I was right into the, um, in Vegas. I was out there for three weeks. After that, I got back. I went straight to PT from there, and I just never stopped. I'm doing it four days a week, nonstop. You know, and um, I feel great. Uh, it's my new sport, pretty much. I'm pretty much a physical training man. If you got any injuries, <laughs> holler at me. I'll take care of you. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I'm ready, man. I'm excited. The division's on fire right now. Uh, my, my, my boy, Calvin Cade, is killing it. You know, you got to understand, I get to come back. And that's my main training partner. So how, I hear what I'm saying, like, come on, man. Like they can't find somebody else that. to train with. Yeah, that's better. Exactly. Than that. You know, say so think about that. Like I get to come back and have Calvin Cater as my my main training partner, yeah. and get to pick his brain and get to go through his, you know, his his mental strengths and, and, and worries or whatnot. Like he, you know, and, and at that, he, you know, think about it, he's a he's two and zero oh during a, a pandemic. He, could, you know, I can't I can't speak on that. I never fought during a pandemic right, right. or even fought. And a main event status, you know, now he has five rounds under his belt. Like, I, and I'm learning from that. You know, I can pick up from that. This is the second main event, and I was there for all of it, you know. So I'm picking up on 
what it ha- how how it feels to be in the main event, how it feels to walk last, how it, and even the walk is longer. You know, everything is different when you're in the main yeah. event. So, so when I get the I got the experience that, um, so I picked up and learned from that. Uh, my, our coach picked up and learned from that. You know, he he same thing. He, he's you know coaching the main event. Um, he's negotiating main event purses now. You know, so we're all getting getting better from from you know Calvin and we're all learning and we're, we're, we're taking full advantage and really listening and paying attention to all the small details to that not just oh yeah it's me an event so whatnot like we're really on point and really learning from every single experience and yeah. we're all getting better at, at the team what's it like having Calvin as your training partner and and the from the perspective of like he's probably one of your best friends and you have to like go somewhat competitive against him right like when you're training like I th- asked this question because me and one of my best friends we took up boxing for a couple of years we got to the point where we'd actually spar against each other in the ring and when I got into the ring it was hard for me to like turn off that friend switch and turn on the like boxer switch and so yeah, I never yeah. was able really to go like as competitive as I should have gone for you just walk me through just like how that well, how that works I, I, in your mind I think it's easy for us, honestly, because we're, we're highly competitive and we, for a while, and we wanted to fight each other. So it's like, <laughs> and, and, and yeah, like, so in a way, yeah, yeah. It's like we get, we kind of get to do it, but we're, we're, I think we're so like, I'm not trying to sound cocky, but I think we're so good that we can, we can hit each other without hurting. If that makes right. sense. Like, yeah. like I'm, bro, I can, he can, he can, he can really hit me, but not really hurt me. If that makes sense. And like, yeah, yeah. It's weird. It's a weird kind of kind of where I'm not, he's not going to knock me out, but he's going to let me, he's going to remind me like, Hey, this is, this is what it would happen if we would have fought, you know? And, and, um, you know, I get to do the same thing with him, like where I can hit him and not really hurt him, but just enough to let him know, like, listen, that was, you know, I, I would have dropped you right there, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, we just feed off that, you know, and then we get better and we push each other because like, he's competitive. He, he drives me to get competitive with him. Um, you know, if I'm creeping, if I'm creeping ahead of him, he's he's right there behind me. If I, you know, he's creeping ahead, I'm right there behind him, and we just keep pushing. And again, yeah. like, I think the fact that we we genuinely wanted to fight each other before this, you know, um, it's even it's even funner now. Like, especially like like if we're by ourselves, it gets it gets pretty pretty intense. You know, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like, and when we think about it, is like, it's kind of like you know, I remember Rocky and uh, Paulo at, at the end of that? I forgot, maybe their third fight or something. Where they yeah. they were solo in the gym by itself, like. When we get into those solo like sessions, we just turn it up. Either we're drilling or sparring or whatever. Like we take it to another level to where I'm getting in trouble because I'm telling my girl I'll be there. I'll be home in 45 minutes, but I'm there for like three hours. Yeah. Just after <laughs> it with Calvin, you know what I'm saying? She yeah, thinks I'm yeah. I'm sitting, I'm I'm messing around, but I'm really in the gym with Calvin. You know? Right, right, right. Getting after it. So yeah, but yeah, we get lost in in in, in the moments. And again, like I said, like I get to come back from a surgery. Well, Calvin Cater, you know what I'm saying? Top five in the world. One of the, one of the smoothest strikers out there. Yeah. You know, I definitely, you're definitely any, any striker, any striker that comes up against you, you're going to know how to deal with them when you got Calvin training you, right? You think about it. And then you saw the wrestling, right? Like look at Edson Barbosa and Danny Gates fight and you saw the wrestling and whoever. And then look how, I mean, I'm not trying to talk shit, but look how almost easy it was for Calvin to just shove off some of those takedowns. Like, and he got taken like down eight one or nine, time. right? Eight or nine and he blocked them all, I think. You know, like so again, like I'm and shout out to Danny Gay. Just you know, man, he's a great wrestler, but it's just people forget that Calvin can wrestle. So not only yeah. is he one of the best strikers out there, and again, top five next champ, he can wrestle. And I get to I get to work yeah, with that yeah. all the time. You know, like on the regular, he's literally five minutes away from my house. I can jog to his house right now, yeah, and get top five work, and I yeah. get top five work every single day. So I'm excited. It's gonna be um. It's gonna be fun. It's that's inter- That's one of the interesting parts of of I think MMA like analysis of fans and media or whatnot is for someone like like Calvin for example where he presents so much as a striker. I think people forget of like the other skills that he has like grappling, wrestling, and whatever it may be. Have you ever experienced something like that where people kind of pigeonhole you into one aspect of being an MMA fighter and you're like, hold up a minute, like I got other aspects here that I'm good at? Yes, yes, and no. Um, I think early on in the my career, definitely like. People saw. I th- thought I was just a striker, but then I know I'll, I'll pull a submission out of out of, out of nowhere. Um, yeah. Now, now not so much. Everybody like. I think everybody knows that if they mess up, I'm going to take something, you know. Um, but, but that thing because everybody's so good at it, all of it just being well rounded. Like, if you just mess up, everybody's taking your arm or your neck. You don't have to be good at just to kind of like see the opportunity and jump right. on your neck and, and all that. Um, as far as like jujitsu by itself, I feel like that we're definitely getting better. But the MMA, like, like, like again, man, you see the Calvin's fight, man. Like 
the ground and pound is so such a big part of it that like his elbows you know, like, make me cringe when I'm watching. <laughs> it, it, only, it only takes a couple, so it's like it's like it's fun, man. It's fun. I'm excited. I can't wait, man. Yeah. Can't wait to get in there. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we've been talking a lot about uh, prepping for fights and everything. Another fan question here from at Robbie McLeod. He wanted to know, good buddy of mine, but he wanted to know after all the prep that you've done throughout your career leading up to fights, which fighter has shocked you the most when you got into the cage? Um, it was it was a a local fight. I fought a kid named Matt DeMarc and Tony, I believe that's his name. And like it was just the most awkward fight I've ever had. Like I I couldn't figure out his timing. I couldn't figure out his reach. Yeah. I had I had I had a four I was fortunate to take downs and I wasn't at that time, I wasn't even that like solid at wrestling. I was just like it was a frustrating, it was annoying, it was like an ugly fight. It was in my opinion, it was a boring fight. I can't even watch it. It was just yeah. It was just bad, and um, and I didn't, and I prepped. It was weird. I, I think that's when I learned to like just really just flow with the with the with the sport. Cause like in my mind, I had this game plan and this situation that's gonna work out, and it, it was a complete opposite to where I had to like switch completely switch up the game plan and, and just kind of freestyle. And from that day, I kind of just all right, no more. I'm just gonna get good at fighting, and that's it. Mm-hmm. I'm never gonna game plan. I'm never gonna like really. I'm not saying I got a game plan, but I'm not going to like rely on it too much. I'm going to like get an idea of what these guys do, but I'm not going to like script it out the way I did in those couple of fights. And, and it's been working out. I, mean, I really just go out there and I just freestyle. I just get good at kicking. I get good at punching. I get, you know, wrestling, just all that. And then I just go out there and just let it all out and have fun with yeah. it and freestyle. That's kind of helping in a couple of ways I'm thinking about. And the first way I thought about is if you really, only, if you go in with a plan and then the plan, like, crumbles for example and you don't have backup plans you're not able to freestyle i think a lot of fighters could get kind of stuck in in a bit panicky yeah, right so get, i think that helps like, it, that. it goes two ways you either you get real panicky you do something stupid or you get like almost like hypnotized and drunk where you yeah. just can't stop you can't just stop doing like the most basic dumb shit you, you, you ever see like a fighter like overshoot and like, you're like why does he keep shooting like you just that's the rhythm that he's built up and he yeah. just can't break the rhythm you know and it's like yeah. Before you know, that's all he, he – it feels right, and but it's completely wrong. And it's like that, that, that triggers you. That's all you built up the whole time, you know, so it's yeah. it's tough. And the other way I think that it helps too is when, you know, you're prepping for a fight and somebody pulls out. I know you've had a couple of fights where other fighters have pulled out kind of week of or, or fights have just been scrapped completely, right? I'm thinking of like Cody and uh, John – that John situation. Yeah. But I got to imagine for you, being able to kind of freestyle really in the ring helps when – for six, eight weeks, whatever it is, you're prepping for a certain opponent, and then a week before it gets switched up on you. Yeah, so that's another thing. Uh, it's like, you, you know, like with MMA and USC and like and injuries and weight cut issues, you never know who you could or could not be fighting on what date or where. And it's like, so now, like, and, it, and I'm just saying that because more of my experience and I, I know now, like, I just prepare for myself. Yeah. Like, there's no name to this. Like, really, before I would be like, oh, I'm fighting this guy. He does this. He does. Like, there's nothing. Like, I don't do that no more. Like, it's just Rob Font. Like, I'm, I'm super greedy when it comes to this. Like, I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm the biggest Rob Font fan there is. Like, I'm just sitting there trying to get better for myself. I don't care who you throw at me. It could be a submission guy. It could be a grappler. It could be a striker. It doesn't matter. It, I'm going to go out there and do what I'm going to do. Yeah. And um, that's the way, again, I'm, in, I'm investing in training. You know, I'm not, I'm not worried about the fight too much. If that makes sense. I'm worried about the training because I know at any time that it could be switched up. It could be fighting this guy and then he pulls out because he slips and falls during the weight yeah. cut. And now I'm yeah. fighting some random dude that I don't even know. And I haven't even studied it. So I'm like, all right, cool. He's still getting knocked out or submitted the same way my original point it was, you know? Yeah, 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 like you mentioned a bit there, it's so important, not only for MMA fighters, but I think athletes in general, to not worry about, like, obviously you want to take into consideration what your opponent's strengths and weaknesses are, but I think you really just want to focus on what your strengths are and just play to those strengths, right? Because that's what's going to mm-hmm. help. That can be applied to any situation in sports is what your strengths are to help you out. Exactly, exactly. You mentioned also weight cut here. One of the last questions before we start wrapping this up, but I know you start off in featherweight, I guess before the UFC, and then we went to the UFC. You started, you switched to bantamweight, was it? Yep. So, what was just? I just want to know what the weight cut is. How different it is for bantamweight? Was that like a hard transition for you to do at the beginning, or is it something that felt more natural? No, nah, it was just like just actually cut weight. When I was at yeah, forty five, yeah. I was the fat forty five, and I could just <laughs> eat whatever and still make weight. You know. Right, um, right. And it, again, like, it just as I got up in the rankings and, and the fights got harder, the guys got bigger, longer, faster. You know, again, like I said, like at that time I was coming up, it was Calvin. I'm now I'm looking at him like he's a big dude. You know, I'm sitting yeah. there trying to 
start fights with guys like Calvin Cater, you know, in the local scene. And, like, I wasn't that big, because but also wasn't cutting weight correctly. And then I finally got with some professionals. Like, oh, I got with perfecting athletes, and they showed me how to do it. And from there, I was like, oh, this is, this is, I should, I should have been fighting at 35. You know, right, it's like, what am right. I doing? And we finally, I mean, that was the plan, anyways. Just, but when I got with them, it was already, right, now we got to do it now. But then when yeah. I met them, the next fight, it was like, go, it was supposed to go down at 35 for CES, but then I got the call. So it was like, perfect. Like, yeah. let's go over to the UFC with the So my first time at 35 was with the UFC. We wanted to do one more to kind of get a test run. But then we got the call, and it's kind of like, all right, do we not take it? Or, you know, like, hell no, we'll just take the fight. We'll, we'll figure it out on the fly. And, and that's what we did, and, we, and it worked out. It was like the cut went smooth. It was almost easier because I was eating correctly beforehand. They don't say before yeah, leaving, yeah. the attempted a weight cut. I, I learned I, I learned how to eat, learned what not to eat. I, I even learned how to cheat. Like, this, if you're still going to cheat, this is how you do it. It showed me exactly how to cheat, how to eat, how to prep the food, how to uh, – how to time the food for certain, like certain foods for after certain times of the day or, or workouts or, or what to eat before a workout, um, even during the workout, what to eat, um, how much to drink. So I learned a lot with perfecting athletes, Michelle, um, Ingles. And then as far, as far as that, honestly, the late cut is like nothing for now. It's yeah, nothing. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. We got it so figured out. We got it so on point. Um, it's easy. Um, so yeah, at forty five, yeah. I was the fat kid eat pizza trying to fight. <laughs> at thirty five, you know, it, it's it's a science. It's uh, they, I know exactly what to do. I know how I'm gonna make the weight, and um, it's, and it was a smart thing in my career, man. Like again, like Tyson, um, he has vision, you know, and he's been helping out a lot. And like he saw, like, listen, we don't need to be out here fighting these big ass forty fivers. And let's actually let's, let's link up, let's connect with one of the best forty fivers out there, Cal Cater. Let's get yeah. both of you guys to the UFC and watch what happens. And I fought him for a little bit with that. I was like, Nah, man, fuck that. I want, I want to fight him. You know, I want, yeah, I want yeah, him. Yeah. And then I'm glad, I'm glad he did that, man. I'm glad he did that because that'd have been a bad fight. <laughs> <laughs> it, man. Definitely don't want those elbows. <laughs> They're bad enough in practice, right? They're bad enough in practice. I'm good, yeah, I yeah. feel it all the time. I'm good. I'm good. Man. Smart decision. Man. Yeah, yeah. Listen, man. A little game I like to play in the podcast here. I have a collection of like sports psychology quotes. I have about 23 of them. We won't go through all 20. Jeez. We won't go through 23. I need, call, then, I need to call you, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> we won't go th- me up real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't go through 23 or else we'll be here till your next fight. But um, I'll let you pick a number between one and 23. And then I'll read you the quote. Let's and go. Then, and then just reflect on the quote a bit. And then like how it transitions to your career and whatnot. Like Let's that. go 15. Let's go with number 15. 15. This is... Uh, I didn't know who this guy was. This guy's name is Vernon Law. He's like some old, old MLB pitcher from like the 30s. But I love the quote. He said, experience is a hard teacher because she gives the test first and the lesson after. Yeah, man. You know, um, you you don't want to really learn by experience. I mean, you can, but not with this. You know, like you, you don't want to learn right. on the job too much. You want to get as much experience if you can't possibly before actually right. going out there. So meaning as much sparring practice, smart, as much learning, getting around like guys that are better, asking questions like, how do you do this? How do you do that? You know, um, cause when you're out there learning on the job, that shit hurts, man. That yeah. shit really hurts. So, you know, cause it's not like, you know, like say, I don't know, like say business, you just, you know, you lose money, right? Whatever. Like it yeah, sucks, yeah, but yeah, you're yeah. not, you're not physically hurt, you know, like, you don't want to, you know, yeah, you might learn out and learn, okay, this that was the wrong play. You should have never made that deal. And that's, all right, that's cool. But if you do that with this, you're, you're losing eyesight, you know, you're, yeah. you're breaking bones, you know, like, uh, so you don't want to learn a job too much. So, you know, get, get your practice up, kids, like yeah, practice yeah. as much as you can, like simulate as much as you can, visualize, get the mental preps, get the, the visual reps, get all that in as much as you can. Cause, and even like, again, asking, like get like a mentor or whatever, you a coach or whatever, and then mm-hmm. ask as much as you possibly can and try to learn from their experiences so you don't have to figure that out and deal with those experiences out there. Cause again, like it's, it, it hurts. You're out there in front of a million people watching you, you know, breaking, you know, getting messed up and, you don't want yeah. that to be your first experience. So Yeah, yeah. And I think to be able to have kind of that prep, that all that prep you need, because I'm sure for you, it's like a seven day a week thing, right? You need to really have a passion yeah. for your sport. And I think people need to realize that when you, you got to find your passion in life, because once you find your passion, the work doesn't really feel like work. And that prep just comes so natural, right? I'm sure that, yeah. I'm sure you feel yeah. that way as well. Like MMA prep, whatever it is, it's just like, you just love it. <laughs> 
Yeah, and I, it's, it, it doesn't it, – it, again, I, I get lost in this. Like, you saw, man, I'm sitting there watching Corner and Count Cater. I'm sitting there, yeah, like, yeah. just – I'm damn there, I'm there, damn there fighting, you know, Danny Gay with them. You know, I'm like, I'm all, <laughs> I, I get so locked in. I get I get so in the zone. Like, man, yeah. it's like this is – and it's easy. I don't say easy for me, but it's it, it doesn't take much for me to get there. You know, it doesn't, like, I don't have to get motivated to get to that to that yeah. point. You know, it's like I'm like I'm, – I wake up. I'm already there. I'm like, all right, guys, yeah. come on, let's go. I'm already yeah. there. It isn't – oh, I got to, like – I gotta hurry up. I gotta go. You know, I gotta go practice. You know, I'm like, I can't wait to practice. I'm, right. You know, I'm, I'm biting. You know, I'm like, wake up, everybody, wake up. Come on, guys, let's go run. Like, I'm just ready to go. Yeah. Right when I wake up, so it, it's easy for me to get there. You um, have another. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another number between one and twenty-three. We'll do one more quote here before we wrap up. Let's go seven. Let's go seven. Seven. This is uh, this is another good one. A lot of athletes like this one. Though, I'll just say that. But this is from Doc Rivers, NBA legendary coach. He said, Celtics, "Good a- go. good athletes want to be coached, but great athletes want to be told the truth." Yeah, that's true, man. Like I want to know if I'm fucking up. I want to know. I don't want you to be like. You know, I want you to baby. You know, I want. I want to know. That's all it is. is I want to know how good I am. How like, what I'm not doing right. You can't have know. that ego. Mm-mm. You can't baby. You know, you can't try to baby the stars or, or the, the, the 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 main fighter and tell me what he wants to hear. And I want to know when I'm messing up. Even if I'm arguing with you, you still gotta let me know. You know, if I'm I'm being ignorant and bratty or whatever for the day, you gotta let me know. Yeah. Because with this stuff, you know, again, like I said, in basketball, you lose a game out here, you you, you can get hurt doing this. So it's like. <laughs> I got to know what I'm good at, what I'm bad at, what I'm getting better at, what I'm what I'm having even come close to even getting good at like and obviously I know but then the mistakes that you see you got to let me know as well so uh, yeah man you got to know what the hell you're doing yeah, yeah is there one part of your game you're really focused on right now trying to improve mental yeah. physical whatever it is it all put it all together it's yeah. the toughest part but I got to put it all together where and it sounds crazy to where you're out there and, you, and you're just not even thinking, you're just reacting and, and flowing and having fun and, and getting creative and, and bringing out more of your personality instead of, um, and, and being more reactive instead of being told what to do. Yeah. You know, like imagine, like, hey, put your hands up. Like, oh, you already know you put your hands up, you know, like, yeah. or, or like, you know, do this combination and do that. Like, no, we, I'm already doing it. You know what I'm saying? Before you even tell me I'm doing it, you're yeah. just flowing with me. You know, yeah. my corner, I want to get to the point where my corner is just kind of flowing with me instead of telling me what to do, you know? And um, that's like, that's the mastery right there. And that's just, that's being so confident in knowing what you're about to do. And, and like, go look at like, like, uh, go look at Conor Gregor versus uh, Jose Aldo when he first knocked him out, right? Like, yeah. remember that, that scene that in the back before he, he, he called it, right? Like, I'm going to hit him with the, yeah. with the straight left. It wasn't a surprise for him. That's real. Like, it's, that shit's real. Like, like you don't think Jordan knows when he's going to make these shots or, or Kobe knew when he how he was gonna you know I'm I'm gonna score forty and then I know I'm I'm gonna push that I'm getting fifty or whatever yeah. you know like like they they know what they're doing and that's like real and that's being super mentally strong practicing your ass off every day and, and, and believing in your stuff and knowing your game and knowing that you can do whatever the hell you want to when you yeah. you, you know when you're in that flow state and uh and it's just knowing exactly it really is just knowing what you're doing yeah it's interesting because i read this um this book recently so it's just some like random like basic sports psychology book but they talk about a lot of research in there and there's like some research that's come out that like when you visualize stuff in your head the neurons that fire off or whatever in your brain or your body are the same neurons that fire off like when you're actually doing it physically so they took like bodybuilders or whoever people that go to the gym like people that actually like did legit bicep curls and people that just like thought about doing bicep curls and like did legit visualization and people that like just imagine doing bicep curls they're able to bicep curl more just by thinking yeah. about doing it it's just crazy that, that. that the whole total I package that. Of, of the I physical really, and mental state yeah i really believe that you know you look at the olympic like athletes you know like like the winter sports, the skiers and, yeah. uh, you know, these say they got, like can't be on the, on the mountain all day long. So they, what they, for the, for the extra reps, they got to visualize it, you know, and they, they, yeah. they see, they stay like, I literally, they'll, they'll, I've seen a couple and they'll close their eyes and just visualize themselves going down the mountain and, and they're flowing with it. And, and that's how they get their reps, you know, and, uh, yeah. our football players, like, like, like this, going through the mental reps of, of, uh, of like a, a punter or a field goal kicker going through that, or mentally, you're going through the mental reps of like shooting free throws or whatever. Like I do a lot of mental reps of just some simple, like a couple of feints and a jab cross. If I know yeah. if I can feint and see my jab cross landing, I know everything else is going to be easier off of those 
two basic things and you can sit there and maybe even if it's like 10 minutes, just visualize it. See yourself fainting and moving and then laying in that jab cross. And it's weird how it works out. You know, like they say, like, you know, uh, like say dreams, right? Like, you know, you wake up from a dream, you're sitting there scared. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you know, our nightmare. feels so like, real. You, you feel so real. Like, like yeah. that's, there's no difference from like that dream state to like that visualize, you know, visualizing and stuff. There's, there's not that much of a difference and you can get yeah. those extra reps. I believe in it and I know it has been helping me. So I recommend it. Yeah. I, I even like it reminded me of like, I don't know if it's just me being messed up or everybody feels this, but like sometimes when I'm like just about to fall asleep, I feel like I'm falling off the bed, but and I yeah. wake up my eyes and I'm just laying there in the center. Right. And it, yeah, it feels yeah, so yeah. real, the, like the yeah. mental part of it, but it's like, you're just, it's you're just tr- fazzing out. Yeah. It's a, it's a tricky game, man. I, it's like a trick. I wish I knew more about it. I'm, I'm, I'm learning more about it, but yeah. it's a tricky game to mind, yeah. man. It's going to tricky game. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's just fire off the rest of these fan questions here before we wrap up here. Um, at D dot O 34. He wants to know who do you want to fight next and why? Um, realistically, I wouldn't mind getting there with like a bigger name, like a like a obviously like a Jimmy Rivera. He just yeah. won. Um, I want I want to sit back and really look at the the rankings, like give you like a legitimate like strategical answer. Um, the other side, like I don't really give a fuck who you yeah, know, like yeah, bring yeah. anybody on, but uh, I think right now. It's fresh. Jimmy Vera makes sense. He he just got a big W. I'm I'm right in that same area and as far as the rankings. Um obviously uh, as far as the big name, I would love to get in there with like a Dominic Cruz and TJ yeah. Dillashaw. I know he's coming back soon. Um but yeah, man, honestly, like the, the boring answer, anybody, but probably the one that makes the most sense uh would be Jimmy Rivera. It's it might be the boring answer, but it's the correct answer, I think. Anybody in yeah. front of you, right? Like that's that's, that's yeah. what you're supposed to say. That's yeah. the mentality you know, you're the, supposed to have. You know, and there is a way to kind of get like uh, you know the right fight. You know, that's the business side of it, and there and, and that's what my manager does. And Tyson on hand that all that. So yeah. I try not to think too much of that. And uh, but there is a more strategic, thought out answer that I should probably give you. But I try not. I try not to think about that. I just yeah. try to like really, really try to just right now just focus on rehab. Yeah. Um, and let Tyson because he's already he's doing it. You know, he's already doing it. He probably has an answer for me already. And like, right. But if things happen, you know, things get shifted. Fights, you know, there's a lot of fights before I even get back. You know, you have a lot of fights, so it could be a whole new division by the time I'm really back. So like, yeah, guys that I want to fight him, mean, so you never know. They might not even be in the division. The champ's not even in the division no more. So it's kind of like yeah. I don't want to like get my or wrap my head around a certain fight or certain fighters when they might not even be available to fight when I'm back or even in the division at that time yeah. or even the rankings at that time, you know? Yeah. So Yeah, it's, it's hard to predict because even like for yourself, like you being off since December, but you're still moving up the rankings. Like I know you're just freshly in the top 10, right? So it's, yeah, like, yeah. you just never know what the rankings are going to be like in, in you know, September, you November, have, uh, December. Yeah, have Cody, Cody Garbrandt back, you know, Cody yeah. Corey Sanhagen. He's coming off that loss, I'm pretty sure. That'd be another one I can jump in. So there's a lot of fights, you yeah. know. And then you have, uh, you have the young kids, uh, Shashan O'Malley, you know, he's buzzing right now. It could be, he can reel off probably three fights in a row. Now I'm, I'm fighting a young up-and-coming that I would probably never even thought I, I was going to get in there with. So it's like... Yeah. Division's hot right now. Yeah. It's pumping. Um, there's a lot of uh, potential fights out there, and I'm just, I'm just excited because I know again, I'm, I got my spot. I'm up there at the top, there like, top ten. I'm just gonna chill, relax. I'm just gonna get better. If it's visual, if it's mental. Um, right now, obviously, I'm working on my physical. Um, and I'm gonna get to go out there and put my hands on one of these there boys. Yeah, whatever, whatever the boss man says, you're gonna fight. You're gonna fight him, and you're gonna. That's, I know what you're it. gonna do in there. We're not gonna say that, but. Um, at, at horseface underscore combat wants to know what your worst travel experience is. Worst travel experience. I mean, honestly, I love traveling. I, I, can't, yeah. I can't say, I, yeah, I, I mean, my parents are in the military. So I kind of got a little bit of that when I was younger. Yeah. I love traveling. Obviously some places are better than others. Some places right. have better food and, um, Actually, you know what? Like it was the Pedro Munoz fight. They then I say the travel, but it was like we missed our flight or the flight got canceled. And it was just a long, it was like a long ass yeah, like time. Just kind of, but I guess I could say I had a bad, a bad experience going to Brazil the second time and I lost again. So I yeah. guess you could say that one. So we're not going to Brazil, yeah. Not going there. Oh uh, man, <laughs> I, I feel like you know I'm like me and Tom Brady are the same, man. We just struggle, you know, like in certain places. Like he struggles yeah. in Miami, I struggle in Brazil, man. It's yeah, just the yeah. worst. Yeah, yeah. At Andrew Mac 
I want to make sure I go to the zeros right here. Zero, 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 seven. He's, he wanted to know where's the best date spot in all of Massachusetts. Date spot? Yeah. Oh, man, I wish I could tell you that, bro. Like, I've been with my girl <laughs> since I was 15, bro. <laughs> I wish I could tell you, man. Like, I don't know. Like, um, I'll ask Calvin for that. He'll take there care of that. There you go. He's got the hookups, eh? <laughs> A man, Calvin has all the spots for you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Last question here. This is which is fun for me though. But um, who's one fighter or athlete or whoever you think would be a good guest in the podcast? Somebody that you look up to, their mental approach to the game and how they approach. Calvin their sport. Cater. There you go. Calvin I had a, Cater, I had a hunch you'd say him. I had a hunch. <laughs> Kyle, but... my boy. He's on. He's on fire right now. He's the next superstar. He's taking over the forty-five division. Um, yeah, man. Hell him hit him up. He has a great mindset. He'll, he'll break some shit down for you and um, also give you some dating tips. Man. So how do I count? Hey, I personally don't need him, but maybe Andrew Mack <laughs> 07 does. Let's go 007. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing here, you know, we're almost an hour here. Time flies. We're having fun, but I want to give you a chance to plug in the New England cartel. I know you guys are doing some merch and some new social media stuff. And me being from the Toronto area, I, I hate Boston teams. I'll just say that right now. But New England cartel <laughs> is the one where I don't mind cheering for, right? Let's so go. Just, yeah, man. It's, it's uh, Boston's fifth team. You know, we're uh, look us up, man. Twitter and New England cartel, Instagram, New England cartel. Obviously, follow me, Calvin Cater, um, Tyson Chartier. Um, also, the merch, just check me out. Go to my Instagram, Rob underscore font. I have a link in my bio. You can also check out Calvin Cater. He has a link in his bio. And the same thing, my manager and coach, Tyson Chartier. He has a link in his bio. And um, yeah, man, come check it out. The hats will be out there as soon as possible. Don't we hats, got shirts. Yeah. We got tank tops, sweaters, hoodies, crop tops. We're going to have some baby gear for you. So um, there you go. Yeah, how at us. Come Austin's check us 15. Out. I love Austin's that. 15, man. I love that. Because as a Raptors, yeah. as a Leafs, as a Blue Jays, whatever fan, can't really like have a spot, soft spot for Boston teams, but there's no, there's, there's no, there's no Canadian MMA team that goes straight up against the cartel. Right. Oh, so man, I can exactly, cheer for you guys. Exactly. That one, I think Let's I'm go, good man. for. I think I I'm good for that, that one. Man. Oh man. <laughs> Anyways, you, man. man, I uh, appreciate you taking some time today and you know, I say this to everybody, but as the countries and whatever things start opening up again, hope that you, your friends and your family, everyone stays safe regards to coronavirus and health and safety and everything. Hope everyone's doing well. And again, this is, this is a huge blast for me. And, and I think a lot of people have some good insight on kind of what goes on inside the mind of an MMA top 10 band and weight fighter like yourself. Let's go. It's weird. I'm not either top 10 or 11, but we'll, we'll yeah, find yeah, yeah. out. <laughs> I think last, when I checked last night, it was top 10, officially top 10. So <laughs> I got to break into that top five, like my bros. So, yeah, yeah, there I'm you go, man. Man. Let's go.